buddy. Hey, uh, I'll explain this in a second. But uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, we've got a beautiful day started outside, it looks like. Let's get us up and running. Here we go. Wendy, short stuff. Number one, Michelle and Rylan. There you go, Rylan. Look what's here. Um, so, uh, yeah, a while ago, sometime last week, good morning, Kayla, good morning, Faith. Uh, Rylan, who is a young lady who watches with her mom and eats breakfast every morning. Good morning, Eileen. They uh, watch Jesus time together and Rylan eats her cereal and she was talking about that she was eating Twinkie cereal. Uh, morning, Debbie. Good morning, Judy and Matt. Good morning, Tom. Good to see you on here. Good morning, Ann and Guy. Anyways, she, good morning, Dustin. She uh, was telling me about Twinkie cereal and I'm like, that's got to be the worst thing I've ever heard of in my life. Is that really a thing? Do Twinkies make cereal? Sure enough, there's Twinkie cereal and she got me some Twinkie cereal. Uh, and so, um, here it is. They, <laughs> I'm sure that is a uh, little toxic bundle of health. First bite. Um, yep. It tastes like a bowl full of calories. Epically uh, awesome. All right. Moving on from Twinkie cereal. <laughs> Don't worry, Rylan, I'll finish my breakfast. Uh, Frank, good morning. Michaela, good morning. Um, uh, hola, good morning. And uh, Martha, good morning. Judy, hugs to you in Colfax. Um, Cheryl, good morning. Um, hey, shoot me an update on Randy. Let me know how he's doing. That would be great. Ron and Toby, good morning to you. Um, and Karen, good morning to you. Uh, Lori, good morning to you. She says, now you're going to have to run a mile. No kidding. Um, it's probably one cup is uh, 180 calories. So a bowl of cereal is probably 400 calories if you have a big bowl of cereal. I don't know. Um, Miss Robin, good morning to you. Jonathan, uh, good morning to you, uh, Kristen uh, Foster. Good morning to you, Kristen. I think you're new. I don't recall seeing you on here before, so uh, give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching from. How'd you find out? Uh, Tracy, good morning to you, and Miss Mia and your crazy house full of dogs. Uh, Scott, good morning to you. Good to see you on here, Miss Elise. Hey, good morning to you. Uh, miss you, friend. Um, all right. Yeah, Judy Emler says, what's the shelf life of uh, Twinkie cereal? Probably like eternity. I don't know, right? Like that's how it works. Good morning, Jana. Good morning, Sarah. All right, let's jump in. Oh, let me pray. We got to do that. We got to do that praying thing. I got sidetracked with Twinkie cereal. Uh, it is a beautiful day. Let's uh, pray and jump into the text this morning. So, uh, Lord, we love you, and uh, we're just so excited to be together this morning with friends, to be in your word. God, um, just keep showing us um, uh, what it is you want us to see each morning as we dig into the text, uh, particularly in these uh, passages we're reading that are pretty familiar, and a lot of people are familiar at least with the stories. Um, help us to see uh, what you want us to see, hear what you want us to hear. Um, and keep just uh, changing us to be more and more like you. And so he's praying in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So I'm going to just dive in. This is a longer chunk of reading today. So I'm going to dive in and get reading. It starts off in Luke chapter 23. And this is the beginning of the uh, Who Wants to Convict Jesus shuffle. Uh, if you saw my Facebook earlier, I put a picture on there, kind of of a map that routes shows the route of all the different places he got shuffled around to to try and be on trial, and so that's a, a good reference uh, for uh, that goes along with this story or this passage. So Luke 23. Then the entire council took Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor. They began 
uh, to state their case, this man has been leading our people astray by telling them not to pay their taxes to the Roman government and by claiming he is the Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replied, You have said it. Pilate turned to the leading priests and to the crowd, and he said, I find nothing wrong with this man. Then they became insistent, but he's causing riots by his teaching wherever he goes, all over Judea, from Galilee to Jerusalem. Oh, is he a Galilean? Pilate asked. When they said that he was, Pilate sent him to Herod Antipas, uh, because Galilee was under Herod's jurisdiction, and Herod happened to be in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was delighted at the opportunity to see Jesus because he had heard about him and had been hoping for a long time to see him perform a miracle. He asked Jesus question after question, but Jesus refused to answer. Meanwhile, the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law stood there shouting their accusations. Then Herod and his soldiers began mocking and ridiculing Jesus. Finally, they put a royal robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate who had been enemies before, became friends that day. Then Pilate called together the leading priests and the other religious leaders along with the people, and he announced his verdict. You brought this man to me, accusing him of leading a revolt. I have examined him thoroughly on this point in your presence, and I find him innocent. Herod came to the same conclusion and sent him back to us. Nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty, so I will have him flogged, and then I will release him. Then a mighty roar rose from the crowd, and with one voice they shouted, Kill him and release Bar uh, Barabbas to us. And Barabbas was in prison for taking part in an insurrection in Jerusalem against the government and for murder. Pilate argued with them because he wanted to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify him, crucify him. For the third time he demanded, Why? What crime has he committed? I have found no reason to sentence him to death. So I will have him flogged, and then I will release him. But the mob shouted louder and louder, demanding that Jesus be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate sentenced Jesus to die as they demanded, and they had requested. He released, uh, and as they had requested, he released uh, Barabbas, the man in prison for insurrection and murder. But he turned Jesus over to them to do as they wished. So. That's a pretty big chunk of text today, um, and it's it's a crazy thing. Um, so Herod, that's in charge here, is one of Herod the Great's sons, um, and there were four of them, and they had divided the the region up to be uh, ruled by these four guys. One of the areas that uh, one of Herod's sons had been in charge of was. Uh, um, Jerusalem area and that was uh, that was kind of handed over uh, he was removed from power and Pilate uh, was a Roman governor and he was placed there there was several Roman governors before him but I think Pilate was the fifth in charge of that particular region and because of that um, Pilate uh, and Herod uh, Antipas uh, didn't get along they, they kind of saw each other as um, at uh, I don't know, kind of competing for influence and authority. They came from different perspectives, um, kind of ruled for different reasons. And so they didn't ever get along. But in Jesus, in the in this what to do with Jesus thing, it was sort of like for the first time they found some common ground. They both didn't really know what to do with him. Uh, and they both agreed that he was not guilty Um and the way they communicated and kind of supported each other's authority, it was one of those things like for the first time, they sort of saw each other not as enemies and more like allies. And so there, uh, there was some sort of camaraderie that was born there as a result of this uh, um, pushing Jesus around, trying to get him uh, um, condemned. And so there, that, that's kind of an interesting little side note that's going on. But really like... The stuff that sticks out to me in this passage, there's there's lots of interesting things to study and learn from this passage, but probably the thing that seems really relevant with the world that we're in right now is that kind of the mob ruled, right? Like the the louder the the crowd, the more the um, rulers felt like they had no choice but to obey uh, and cave and peer you know cave to the peer pressure they the the louder the crowd the more the 
authorities uh, bowed to the, you know, the chance of the crowd. And man, does that ever feel like what's going on here? And and just like what is going on in our current world, like the loud crowd that you hear about, it sounds huge. It sounds like it's all these people. But when you like zoom out and you see what's going on, it's really just like it was in Jerusalem, just this small pocket of people. It's just this small group of the kind of religious elite, the priests, the aristocracy, the leading authorities. Uh, they were the ones that were kind of rallying up the mob. Um, beyond that, there wasn't a huge cry um, to have Jesus killed or persecuted. You know, and it's like the same thing right now. You see these little snapshots on the news about, you know, this riot in this place or this riot or this thing in this place. And they, it, it tries to paint it as if like the whole world is in an uproar and we have to listen to the loud voices that are crying for this and, you know, yelling for this and demanding this. And if you just zoom the camera out, you would see that like all across America, across our entire country, uh, most people are just getting up and going to work every day. The vast majority of people are not rioting and screaming from the top of their lungs and demanding things. And, and yet the politicians cave to the pressure of the few, the loud voice of the few, right? And, and it just, it just kind of reminds me like there's, there's nothing new under the sun, like Solomon said, um, a, a, a small crowd of, uh, loud demanding, um, violent people, um, ended up persuading Pilate to, uh, issue the order for Jesus to be crucified. And so, um, it's just a, it's kind of a crazy thing. The influence, um, and pressure that comes from a lot, you know, a bunch of people, uh, demanding their way. And so the thing I, you know, the takeaway for me, kind of like just practical nugget out of this is like, just be leery of uh, kind of mob rules and uh, be leery of, uh, like we know, but be leery of peer pressure. Be mindful of, like, what are you letting influence you? Um, is it the small, uh, loud voices that are, uh, you know, kind of whoever's shouting the loudest doesn't necessarily mean they're correct or right. And so it, it, it's just so important that whatever we're, process and that we're going back to the word of God, that we're using scripture to guide us, to, um, to help us understand, um, what's right and what's wrong. Um, and don't just get swayed by the, the huge tidal wave of, um, yelling people, you know, demanding people trying to present their case. Right. So I don't know, that's, that's kind of a thought for me out of this deal. Um, so all right, that's what I got for you this morning, and and maybe God gave you a different nugget out of there, and that would be cool. So, hey, I just want to say hi to a bunch more people that jumped on here. Kevin uh, House is watching. I think you're new, Kevin. Let us know where you're watching from. That would be awesome. Tracy, uh, my brother-in-law. Good morning, brother. Good to see you on here this morning. Hope all is well. I uh, look forward to catching up with you soon. Miss Tanya out at the Palouse Caboose. Good to see you, John. My mom, good morning. Oh, and Breck is back there, I think. So good morning to you, Breck. Um, Mark Gunderson, good morning to you, brother. Um, good to see you on here. Brenda Day, good morning to you. Miss Tammy, and uh, good to see you. I saw uh, pictures of your husband's uh, uh, special elk uh, slash unicorn. You should uh, post a picture of that in the comments. Everybody wants to see your husband's uh, unicorn elk. It was kind of funny. Good morning, Matt. Good to see you on here. Um, so yeah, we had good turnout this morning, good crowd this morning. Good to see everybody on here this morning. Uh, apparently, I have uh, Twinkie cereal to finish up because uh, Rylan is already checking on me to see if I'm going to finish it and give her a... a a food report on uh, how the Twinkie cereal does. And then I'm just going to go straight to the treadmill for a half hour and see if I can burn off my bowl of Twinkie cereal. So crazy. Um, all right. That's what I got this morning. Tiana, good to see you on here as well. I didn't catch you up there earlier. So uh, Randy, good morning and good to see you up in Bonners. 
Um, we'll be back on here tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, have us... Uh, we're going to do some bigger chunks, but we're going to try and finish up Luke this week so that after Labor Day, uh, we will uh, be jumping into something new. All right. Don't forget our worship night this Thursday night. So just a couple of nights away, 630 at Daggy Hall here in Pullman. Uh, wear a mask and come worship with us if you're ready to be uh, with uh, a bunch of people that want to worship the Lord. Um, that would be awesome. We'd love to see you uh, with us. Um, we're also going to live stream that event so you can catch it on our Real Life Church Facebook page or our YouTube channel and uh, join us via live stream as well. So um, that's the skinny on that. And then don't forget all of our regular lifers, no church this Sunday, Labor Day weekend. We are resting as a church. Uh, so we've got a big worship night Thursday night and then no church. That includes online. Nothing, nothing at all this weekend. We're just chilling out. So... Y'all have a fabulous day. The weather report is, I forgot to do it at the beginning. It's pretty nice. The leaves are moving a little, so it's a, a light breeze and beautiful blue sky. It's going to be a great day and uh, all that good stuff. You guys have a fabulous Tuesday.